While the world is still recovering, research hasn't slowed its frenetic pace especially in the field of artificial intelligence. Many important aspects were highlighted this year, like the ethical aspects, important biases, governance, transparency and much more. Our understanding of the human brain and its link to AI are constantly evolving, showing promising applications improving our life's quality in the near future. Still, we need to be careful with which technology we choose to apply. Here are my top 10 of the most interesting research paper of the year in AI, more specifically computer vision. Enjoy the video and let me know if I missed any important papers in the comments. Before jumping into my favorite computer vision paper of the year, I'd like to take a minute to talk about my friends at Weights and Biases for sponsoring this project. For those of you that aren't aware of what Weights and Biases is, it's a fantastic tool that allows easier control of your machine learning projects and I sincerely think everyone in the field should be using it. It allows such control by tracking all of the input hyperparameters, output metrics and any insights you or your team have. One aspect I love for teamwork is Weights and Biases reports. I love how I can capture all of my project's charts and findings that I can share with my team and get feedback. The charts are interactive and tracked with Weights and Biases so I know my work is reproducible, something essential in our field. Plus, you can embed it in Notion. I'd love for you to check them with the first link below since they are helping me do projects like this one. DALI is a new neural network developed by OpenAI based on GPT-3. In fact, it's a smaller version of GPT-3 using 12 billion parameters instead of 175 billion parameters. But it has been specifically trained to generate images from text descriptions using a dataset of text image pairs instead of very broad dataset like GPT-3. It can generate images from text captions using natural language, just like GPT-3 can create websites and stories. It's a continuation of ImageGPT and GPT-3 that I both covered in previous videos if you haven't watched them yet. DALI is very similar to GPT-3 in the way that it's also a transformer language model receiving text and images as inputs to output a final transformed image in many forms. It can edit attributes of specific objects in images as you can see here or even control multiple objects and their attributes at the same time. Researchers from the Heidelberg University in Germany recently published a new paper combining the efficiency of convolutional approaches with the expressivity of transformers to produce a semantically guided synthesis of high-quality images, meaning that they used a convolutional neural network to obtain context-rich representations of images to then use this representation instead of the actual image to train a transformer model to synthesize an actual image from it, allowing much higher resolution than IGP while conserving the quality of the resulted image. Indeed, just like the popular saying, a picture is worth a thousand words, pictures contain much more information than sentences. So we have to adapt the basic transformers architecture to process images efficiently. This is what this paper is all about. This is due to the fact that the computational complexity of its self-attention is quadratic to the image size, thus exploding the computation time and memory needs. Instead, the researchers replaced this quadratic computational complexity with a linear computational complexity to image size. The process to achieve this is quite simple. At first, like most computer vision tasks, an RGB image is sent to the network. This image is then split into patches and each patch is treated as a token. And these tokens, features, are the RGB values of the pixels themselves. To compare with NLP, you can see this as the overall image is the sentence, and each patch is the word of that sentence. Self-attention is then applied on each patch, here referred to as windows. Then, the windows are shifted, resulting in a new window configuration to apply self-attention again. This allows the creation of connections between windows while maintaining the computation efficiency of this windowed architecture. This is the first solution for this problem, but it's extremely impressive considering we only feed one image to the network and it can generate what it will look like to fly into it like a bird. Of course, this task is extremely complex and will improve over time. As two-minute papers will say, imagine in just a couple of papers down the line how useful this technology can be for video games or flight simulators. I'm amazed to see how well it already works even if this paper is introducing this new task, especially considering how complex this task is, and not only because it has to generate new view points like Ganverse 3D is doing, which I covered in a previous video, but it also has to generate a new image at each frame. And once you pass a couple of dozen frames, you will have close to nothing left from the original image to use. And yes, this can be done over hundreds of frames while still looking a lot better than current view synthesis approaches. 
Have you ever wanted to change the background of a picture but have it look realistic? If you've already tried that, you know that it's not simple. You can't just take a picture of yourself in your home and change the background for a beach. It just looks bad and not realistic. Anyone will just say that's photoshopped in a second. For movies and professional videos, you need the perfect lighting and artists to reproduce the high quality image. And that's super expensive. There's no way you can do it with your own pictures. Or can you? Well, this is what Google Research is trying to achieve with this new paper called Total Relighting. The goal is to properly relight any portrait based on the lighting of the new background you add. This task is called Portrait Relighting and Background Replacement, which, as its name says, has two very complicated subtasks. First, Background Replacement, meaning that you will need to accurately remove the current image's background to only have your portrait. And second, Portrait Relighting, where you will adapt your portrait based on the lighting of the new background scene. Have you ever taken a beautiful landscape picture and later on noticed that it didn't look quite as good as when you were there? It may be because you just cannot freeze such a real life landscape and expect it to look as good. In that case, what about having this picture animated where the normally moving particles will be in constant movement just like the moment you took the photo, observing the water flow or see the smoke disperse in the air? Well, this is what a new algorithm from Facebook and the University of Washington does. It takes a picture, understands which particles are supposed to be moving, and realistically animates them in an infinite loop while conserving the rest of the picture entirely still, creating amazing looking videos like this one. Sincerely, I don't know why, but I love it. I love how it looks and wanted to share their work. What do you think about these results? And how would you use them? Personally, once the code is released, I am using these as a desktop background. CVPR 2021 Best Paper Award goes to Michael Niemeyer and Andreas Geiger from the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems and the University of Tübingen for their paper called Giraffe, which looks at the task of controllable image synthesis. In other words, they look at generating new images and controlling what will appear, the objects and their position and orientations, the background, and etc. Using a modified GAN architecture, they can move objects in the image without affecting the background or the other objects. I'm sure you've all clicked on a video thumbnail from the slow-mo guys to see the water floating in the air when popping a water balloon, or any other super cool looking slow-mos they made with extremely expensive cameras. Now, we are lucky enough to be able to do something not really comparable, but still quite cool with our phones. What if you could reach the same quality without such an expensive setup? Well, that's exactly what Timelens, a new model published by Tulyakov et al, can do with extreme precision. Just look at that. It generated a slow motion videos of over 900 frames per second out of videos of only 50 frames per second. This is possible by guessing what the frames in between the real frames could look like. And it's an incredibly challenging task. You can try it right now with this new method and their Google Collab Notebook available for everyone. Simply take a picture of the style you want to copy, enter the text you want to generate, and this algorithm will generate a new picture out of it. Look at that! Such a big step forward. The results are extremely impressive, especially if you consider that they were made from a single line of text. To be honest, sometimes it may look a bit all over the place, especially if you select a more complicated or messy drawing style Last year, we first saw Nerf, then Nerve, and other networks able to create 3D models and small scenes from images using artificial intelligence. Now, we are taking a small step and generating a bit more complex models. Whole cities. Yes, you've heard that right. This paper is about generating city-scale 3D scenes with high-quality details at any scale. It works from satellite view to ground level with a single model. How amazing is that? We went from one object that looked okay to a whole city in a year. What's next? I can't even imagine. If you've been following my channel and posts, you know that deep neural networks proved to be extremely powerful again and again. But they also have weaknesses and weaknesses that we should not try to hide. 
As with all things in life, deep nets have strength and weaknesses. While strengths are widely shared, the latter is often omitted or even discarded by companies and ultimately by some researchers. This paper by Alan Yul and Cheng Si Liu aims to openly share everything about deep nets for vision applications, their success and the limitations we have to address. Moreover, just like for our brain, we still do not fully understand their inner workings, which makes the use of deep nets even more limited since we cannot maximize their strength and limit weaknesses. As stated by O. Hobart, it's like a roadmap that tells you where cars can drive, but doesn't tell you when or where cars are actually driving. This is another point they discuss in their paper, namely, what is the future of computer vision algorithms?